Right guys, welcome to another video. What we're going to do today is we're going to investigate our rotational kinetic energy. Alright, so if you haven't checked out the previous uh, videos when it comes to rotational motion, get yourself back on that track. Um, but if you have, let's carry on. Now, we've got a question here. We've got an object, um, a trolley system. It's got wheels which spin rotational kinetic energy. It's got a trolley itself. It's got linear kinetic energy. So we're going to find the total values of all these. Now, I'm going to introduce you to some new formulas. If you haven't seen these before, again, go back and check out your uh, previous video on and, and rotate angular velocity and acceleration. But we're going to actually be applying um, some of this um, today to solve this problem. Now, the formulas that we're going to be looking at is this one here, rotational kinetic energy. And to answer this section, we're going to need this formula here. OK, OK. Now, we're going to tap into various new bits, and then we'll, we'll see how that applies to, to solve this problem. But what I recommend you do, spend a bit of time working your way through this question, making a little list of your known values. So that's what we'll do right now. Let me move this out of the way. Pop that up there. Okay. So, working our way through here, we've got a trolley and a conveyor system. It's got a mass of 100 kilograms. So I'm going to pop that on my list. Mass. I'm going to put a little T there to represent the trolley. I'll do 100 kilograms. All right. It's got four wheels, and they each have got a mass of 0.2 kilograms. So another mass. I'll put a little W there to represent wheels. That's 0.2 kilograms. Now, luckily enough, both of these are in the correct units for mass, so um, we don't need to transfer between grams and kilograms for this. Um, these wheels that are rotating, I've got a diameter of 100 millimeters which as we know is not 0.1 meters, 100 divided by 1000. And we've got a bit more information here. Um, mass considers that it its radius. I'll leave that for now. Um, but we've actually got a linear velocity here. Linear velocity is equal to 10 meters per second. Now, the first thing that we have to do is to solve this problem, we need to have a little look at this formula. Okay. Now to calculate the rotational kinetic energy, we need our angular velocity. All right. Now, angular velocity is calculated by taking the linear velocity of an object and dividing it by the radius of that object that's spinning. So again, go back to the previous video um, if you don't know what angular velocity is. Um, but for this case, we've got our linear velocity and we can get our radius. So I'm going to pop that in. So the angular velocity is equal to the linear velocity divided by the radius of the object it's spinning. The wheels are spinning, so it's half my diameter, so it's not 0.05. So my angular velocity is going to be equal to 200 radians per second. Right. So anywhere we see this root letter omega, or that fancy W, as some of you prefer to call it, it we're using that 200 value. So let's go ahead and let's start to solve this first part of this question, the rotational kinetic energy of the wheels. Now I'll pop my formula up here. Kinetic rotational energy is equal to the moment of inertia times angular velocity squared. Now we know angular velocity, which is done here, but what we don't know yet is this rotational uh, the moment of inertia. But we'll go back to our formula and we'll see here we've got rotational inertia, or the moment of inertia, is equal to I is equal to M, okay, sorry, M R squared. Now, what is the K? Now, on this project or this question, these this K is for radius of gyration. Again, go back and check the previous video if you need to. That's for radius of gyration. And you're given this value, and that value in this question is one half. Okay, okay. So the mass is the mass of the wheels because I'm doing my rotational kinetic energy. So the mass of the wheels is 0.2. And my radius of the wheels is the same radius that I used down here, which is 0.05. Now I'm going to pop that in some brackets because it's getting squared. Now feel free to, to actually get that answer. And you could add that to your list if you wanted. But I is equal to, and I'll give you a sec to pop that in your calculator. We'll get... 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 kilogram meters squared. 
Okay. Now the more pedantic engineering tutors uh, out there might say, oh, you need to turn that into engineering notation, so we're at our ENG button, then we'll get 250 times 10 to the minus 6, but we'll leave it as that for now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually take that value and apply it to my formula up here. So I've got rotational kinetic energy is equal to I, which is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4, times my angular velocity squared, 200 squared. And that's going to give me calculation, pop it in there. That's going to give me 10 joules. Again, energy formulas, go back and check your, your units on that one. Alright, now, last thing I'm going to do here, I need, oops, I need to have a little think about this. So, what I've done is I've got one rotational kinetic energy calculation. But as you can see, it would make sense if I've got four wheels spinning, then I'm going to need to multiply that by four. So, I've got a total of 40 joules. Alright, so that's that first part of that question. Go and run about the houses, but don't forget there'll be some practice ones in your workbook so you can have a little go at. So, the rotational kinetic energy, these wheels are rotating, the kinetic energy is also rotating so therefore um, it's being generated there's four of them so I multiplied that by four now next bit kinetic energy of the trolley body kinetic energy of the trolley okay and this is the linear kinetic energy this time again check in your formula sheets half m v squared now I've got my v which is 10 I've got my m which is the trolley so don't forget, up here, I've used the mass of the wheels. Down here, I've got the mass of the trolley. I'll pop that on there. So, linear kinetic energy is equal to 0 0.5 times 100 times, I'll bang that in some brackets, 10 squared. So, half of 100, 50 times 10 squared will give us 5,000 joules. Again, if you don't trust me, pop that on your calculator, see what answer you get. Alright, last but not least, we're going to find the total kinetic energy. Kinetic energy T, and I'll put total on there, so we know what's what. And we're simply going to add the rotational kinetic energy to the linear kinetic energy to give us the total kinetic energy. So we've got 40 plus 5,000 which equals oops, 5,040 joules or 5.04 times 10 to the 3 joules okay okay so there's quite a bit going on there some new formulas for us some new uh, calculations that we've never performed before but what you'll find is um, if you use your formula sheets and you use the values that are on there if you can interpret these questions you're getting some practice then you want to win a right away so check your workbook there's plenty more examples in there on in relation to this um, so make sure you have a little go at those but as always thanks for watching and if in doubt give me a shout and i'll try and help you as much as i can bye bye